December 24, Dusty's there with his secretary, Tracy. We'll talk more about that in a minute. <laughs> talk, talking about how Jarrett has a surprise coming for him at re- uh, final resolution. The Kings of Wrestling come out. Jarrett and Dusty again keep talking over each other before Dusty finally announces a three-way elimination match at final resolution where the winner will face Jarrett later that night and introduces the competitors in that match, Monty Brown wearing a frankly wonderful yellow turtleneck. Uh, everyone in this segment was looking was looking fly as hell. DDP came out came out wearing a deck the hog shirt. Yes, <laughs> which I I couldn't stop looking at. <laughs> like what? Why? What? Just Jar- Jarrett had his 2005 style drip on, which I respect. Mm-hmm. And most importantly, Scott Hall had the Elvis outfit. Yeah, Kevin Nash. Just sweat, just sweatpants and a, and, a, and a fucking singlet. It's quite honestly maybe the best dressed wrestling segment I've seen in this company's history. And of course, Dusty. Oh yeah, well Dusty's always looking fly as hell. Mm. So he announces that the three people in the match will be Monty Brown, Turtleneck, DDP, Deck the Hog, <laughs> and Kevin Nash, Casual Attire. Uh, and then Nash and Jarrett make faces at each other because the idea being that Dusty Rhodes is putting Nash in a number one contenders match against his pal Jarrett to try and drive the wedge between them. And boy, it works so well. <laughs> I, I appreciate how they're like, Dusty's not going to come between us. He's, we, we work out what he's doing here. And then it's like, no. He immediately gets in between them. <laughs> yeah, because this show ends uh, and Hall reassures Jarrett being like, yeah, that belt's not going anywhere. And then... Paul's like, hey, hey, Kev, you think about how much money we could make with that belt? <laughs> and, and, and Nash is like, hmm, money. I love that Scott Hall's the one who's like, you know, fuck Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, man, you, you, you a WWF champ, you a WCW champ, you ever been an NWA champ? <laughs> He's like, no, no, I haven't. <laughs> it's like, there's money in being champion, isn't there? And I do like money. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know we know that there's people who get mad at that kevin nash character which is the tna kevin nash character in particular which is i don't give a shit but if it makes me money i'll be interested Uh, i kind of love that character character you say well yes it's him as a human being but they incorporate it into the character Kevin Nash is one of the best TNA characters of all time, and I will not hear a single word differently. Because there's people like, oh, you should always be putting over the title, which I, I generally agree with in principle. But then it makes Nash feel special that he's like, I really don't give a fuck. But if it makes me more money, then I do give a fuck. Which puts over the title. <laughs> because the title is the thing that makes you more money, because it's so important. Jeff Jarrett comes to the ring with Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. Jarrett says that Dusty can stack the odds against them all he wants, but Jarrett will always beat the odds. And Jarrett, while doing this, I I can't remember why he put the NWA title down. I think it was to lift his guitar. And Scott Hall just picked the belt off the mat, but Jarrett pulled it away from him. Hoisted by his own guitar. Monty interrupted, told Jarrett to shut up, said he's going to go through Nash and DDP, and then Jarrett, he's going to win the belt, and the crowd won't be singing, next world champ, they'll be screaming, the world champ and then hits his catchphrase and by god this man should have won the belt pounce P- 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 period january 7th show i think the idea here is everybody gets a confrontation with uh jared i think that's what they're going for uh jared comes out in his denim jacket orange chinos fit just i love this man i take everything bad <laughs> i've ever said like, off the table this guy he, he knows drip. You, you gotta respect it. <laughs> Tanae lays out all the challengers he could be facing. Jared talks about all his potential opponents, including Liam, dropping his favorite double A ball player line for Monty Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Jared's like, he thinks of a thing and then he's like, I'm gonna say this a thousand times. He will never come up with a second thing to say about Monty Brown. He has that one thing and he does not need anything else. It's not even just that. Like, Remember when he was trying to get the fucking Planet Jared thing over, and he ended every promo by like being like, "It's Planet Jared, and you're just living on mm-hmm. it." And it was like, "This is a global warning." Oh, he tried so hard with that global warning thing. It's like that's 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 not a thing. This isn't stop it. <laughs> we should steal that. Uh, Tanae lays out the challengers, and then Jared talks about them. Uh, and says there will be no divide and conquer, and that the kings of wrestling won't fall for Dusty's game. But then Jarrett demands Nash get his head straight. So he's like, I won't fall for it. Nash, cop yourself on. (laughs) (laughs) 
I, I liked where this segment went from here. So DDP interrupted, then Monty ran out. A brawl broke out that Nash joined in on. Nash was wailing on Monty in one corner. Jarrett was wailing on DDP in the other. Hall was like encouraging Jarrett behind him, even like throwing the punches along with him, like mining him. Very good stuff. Hall like just touched Jarrett on the shoulder. Jarrett did the classic swing turn, throw a blind shot, decked Hall. Jarrett was like, oh my God, what have I done? He decked the holes. He did deck the holes here on January mm. 7th. <laughs> mm. This is our Christmas episode account, so we can make those jokes. Uh, so Nash was mad that Jarrett decked Hall. Jarrett was like, I didn't mean to. And then DDP and Monty eventually cleared house. I, I liked this segment. I thought this segment had good energy to it. I also, I liked all of this segment. I think this was good booking. But the thing I liked about it most is that it continues like DDP's career long trajectory of always starting shit <laughs> <laughs> he is a, a professional shit stirrer gdp shows up and brawls break out that's just how it is the man does love to stir some shit so yeah i i can i liked that aspect of it too it was very within character for diamond dallas page yeah i thought they did the the whole like jared accidentally hitting hall thing very well i thought nash's reaction because say say what you will about nash but when they when called to do a serious wrestling angle he will do it and like i thought nash's reaction felt very organic and he did feel actually mad at jeff jared for decking his friend i'm very worried that one day we're gonna turn on kevin nash i feel like it'll come pretty late like the TNA Legends title. Yeah, I feel like that's the era we're most likely to turn on him, or maybe like the 2010 stuff where he's doing like the band. With the band, we're, we're angry at Hulk. We're not angry at, get angry at Kevin Nash for taking the payday. Yeah, and Nash does leave shortly after that. Anyway, I think he senses that it's like I can't even have fun here anymore. Yeah, I'm not even doing paparazzi, paparazzi productions. I'm out of here. I'll go back to the Fed and wrestle and the hammer on a ladder match. <laughs> Lol, Kevin Nash thought he was dead. Um. Which, the, I can't believe I just we just brought that up, because there was an earlier thing, an earlier segment where Nash, DDP, and Hall all, like, confronted oh, each I other. Oh, I forgot about that one. Yeah, I love that segment. <laughs> and the segment's great, because they're all, like, taking these snipes at, at each other, and it also leads... Because, like, I don't know if this was... Was this, um... Did this happen on one of the shows where they still thought they had Randy coming yeah, in? Yeah, this was the first show after the pay-per-view, after Turning Point. Cool. Which makes, which is actually very cool because they say stay out of each other's business. And if they were thinking that they were going to do the Randy thing, that probably would have been what, what was going to happen. But because they didn't, they immediately got in each other's business. So it actually makes sense. Yeah. There's a there's a nice shot in one of it where I, I don't know if it was DDP. I think it was actually Nash or Hall saying it to DDP where they're like, LOL, thought you were dead. <laughs> and I was like, oh, full circle, because then that's what Nash got. Uh, my favorite part of that segment is uh, they're like, hey, watch your match at the pay-per-view. Saw Raven kicked out of the diamond cutter, you useless piece of shit. <laughs> and then DDP's like, yeah, well, when I banged him a second time, it worked. <laughs> and I was like, ooh. <laughs> DDP loves banging. <laughs> he, he loves to bang. I also liked that in that segment, they were like, yeah, you know, when you're going in, you're the outside or you're inside. And I was like, ah, that's, that's the names. So they're tag teams, Liam. Yeah. Uh, this January 7th show ended with Jarrett and Nash having a shouting match. And then a, ma a mysterious man under a table. <laughs> Which went absolutely nowhere. January 14th, the only real build here was Jeff Hammond did a sit-down interview with DDP, Monty, and Nash. Which I was enjoying until Jeff Jarrett showed up. <laughs> I like that he just was there. Mm. It was a little, a little Jeff Jarrett jump scare. <laughs> he just appeared as the other people were talking. It's insane how our podcast works. We talk about things and then the real life happens at the same time. We're like a month and a half into Jeff Jarrett as an AEW TV regular. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? He's not hitting enough people with guitars. He did hit... Who did he hit with a guitar this week? Max Caster? Yes. I was most upset with that segment where they did the weird thing where the producer cut him off and then didn't get hit mm. by a guitar. I was like, what's the point of that? Yeah, yeah like... I, I get the idea that like he meant to be like this unhinged guy that like the comedy can't control, but like he should be hitting people with guitars while he's doing that. Yeah, like uh, that whole segment I thought was set up that like you know he, his promos going long, producer tells him to wrap it up, hits producer with guitar, but he just kind of chased the producer. It's like no, hit him with a guitar. Yeah, but overall I think so far it's been a pretty a pretty good success. I hope they put the tag belts on him. <laughs> that would rule, wouldn't it? Jeff Jarrett, AEW Tag Team Champion. It is the one thing he never did in TNA. He was well, I suppose he wasn't X Division Champion either. But he was never really a tag team guy in TNA either. I I, I like the whole. I wish they were just Cold Planet Jarrett, mm. but I get that they don't want to do that because Jay Lethal's supposed to be like the biggest guy in it. I Come guess. Come on. 
But I, I, I do wish it was Planet Jarrett. It though. should just be Planet Jarrett. <laughs> that should be the stable that all the, like, XTNA guys go in. <laughs> it should be, like, just keep bringing them in one by one. Like, like the, the guns come in and do, like, a one-off again like they did last time. They should just be in the Planet Jarrett stable. Their backstage interview should be exclusively conducted by Goldilocks. <laughs> oh, that would... R- oh, Scott, they, they, they demand that Scott Hudson is the <laughs> one that interviews them. I think Tony would love that, too. That would rule. I would be a big fan of that. Let's let's um let's let's clip this and ship it to Tony. Clip it and ship it. He knows what to do. And I uh, don't suppose you saw any of the dark results today, Garrett. Only the like the the Billy Starks and Kenny Omega matches. Well, Jeff Jarrett has returned to the dark zone. Oh, well done. The the house that Jeff Jarrett built. Yes, he 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 was on these dark tapings. So th- I thought that was very like a fun moment. Him returning to Soundstage Twenty One. It's actually not Twenty One. I think it's eighteen or nineteen. It's nineteen. Still... It's nineteen. I think. But like, it's it's it is very fun that he's there. Cause like, I like that all the ex teenage guys like want to do at least one of those tapings, just for the nostalgia trip. Yeah, cause like the Bucks did it too, where they're like, we want to do one of these tapings because we have like all this nostalgia for the time there. It's fun. They should, they should make Okada do one when next Forbidden Door cycle. <laughs> S- send send Joe down there. <laughs> Maybe that's where they film Ring of Honor. <laughs> it might be. I wouldn't be surprised. In the honor zone. So DDP said in this Jeff Hammond interview that he wants to add his name to the NWA title lineage. Then DDP and Nash laughed at the double-A ball player line, which did upset me. <laughs> <laughs> well, they haven't watched the show. They don't know. And Nash then said he's here for the money before Jared interrupted, and they had a pull apart between Nash and security, which, well, and now Jared was there too, I guess. <laughs> like, my big issue here is, like, they're building to Nash and Jared, I think quite consciously, that that's the match they want people to think is going to happen at the pay-per-view, because, again, they don't have faith in Monty. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why don't you have faith in Monty? Well... Don't worry, they'll do the right thing at the pay per view. Monty will go over. We'll have him as the new champion heading into the ne- for the new year. So it's fine. It's just a little misdirect. Final resolution, two thousand five, mm-hmm. January sixteenth, live on pay per view. The best show in company history. May well be. Obviously, ends in the way that you want. Jared opens the show with the same interview he's done every time with franchise. Yeah, why do they do this? I don't know. Jared has to get himself in the show at the all times. And then I thought they turned it into a four-way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you saw a graphic where they said, like, Monty versus DDP versus Nash, and then the winner will face Jarrett. They brought Jarrett in after, and you're like, oh! I was like, what the fuck? We're just doing this? So we did have the triple threat match between Monty Brown, Diamond Dallas Page, and Kevin Nash for number one contendership. Rules were elimination, but pinfall submission and over-the-top rope elimination. I think it was all right. The over the top roll part was mostly to eliminate Nash without pinning Nash. It, it, like the, the DDP was at least pinned by Monty. I don't even think that was like that's a, a bad decision either. No, it makes sense. I'm I'm really looking forward to Monty Brown versus Kevin Nash. <laughs> Nash earlier in the show approached DDP and I was like, "Hey man, you know what? How we could get away with doing minimum work here if <laughs> if we double teamed Monty and eliminated him, and then we could have ourselves a little like." two three minute rest and then we could go on and have a a gentleman's contest to determine who would become number one contender dp was skeptical of kevin nash's suggestion he's like oh, trusting kevin nash that'll be the day so they do this match where, where nash kind of stands in the corner as ddp is attacking monty anytime monty gets uh anything on ddp nash kind of intervenes and then the second ddp turns his back on nash nash charges him but ddp Ever the smarter man ducks, jumps Nash over the rope. So Nash tried to betray DDP at the first chance, but DDP was at least smart enough to see it coming. He banged him. He did bang him. Uh, DDP then banged Monty Brown, hit the diamond cutter. (laughs) Nash pulled DDP (laughs) off the pin, uh, beat him up a little, threw him back in the ring, back onto the pin. But Monty did kick out. And then the finish, which is fantastic. So DDP hit the ropes and he was trying to uh, hit a diamond cutter coming off the ropes. But Monty shoved him to continue his momentum to the other side of the ring. Monty hit the ropes, pounced him. Diamond cutter straight into the pounce. Fantastic finish. And Monty... Is your number one contender, the alpha male Monty Brown, will challenge Jeff Jarrett for the second time in the main event of this pay-per-view. Yep. That finish screams to me a DDP finish. Mm. 
you know, he's going for the running RKO and oh. then <laughs> Monty Brown comes in with the pounce, you know. And that's just, just classic DDP. You're like these people in the impact zone hmm? who when DDP went for the RKO or the oh, no <laughs> 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 fucking iron yeah. when DDP went for the diamond cutter those geeks started chanting RKO and I wanted to beat them up <laughs> you have to beat yourself up now I do I do that all the time though uh, Dallas Page's neck seems to be in good shape he was forced to retire from WWE due to a neck injury but he hasn't been complaining of any soreness after working recent matches he does only work once a month when you said Dallas Page I, th- I thought you meant Lance Archer and Page for a second there. <laughs> Dallas Page is actually Hangman Page, uh, Page and Lance Archer's uh, tag team name Oh, that'd be great. So apparently DDP is not suffering much these days. That's good. It's all that yoga. The main event for <laughs> the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Monty Brown wins in 15 minutes. Crowd goes nuts. We have the new crowning of a of a young champion. Jeff Jarrett defeated the alpha male Monty Brown to retain the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. I got you did the wrong you read it wrong it's it's the other way around no, no it's not Monty lost <laughs> I don't remember that that's <laughs> that's ridiculous why would Monty Brown lose it makes very little sense Liam boy Monty Brown would lose in this particular moment to end this particular title reign as if like the TNA buy rates would fall through the floor if Monty Brown was headlining instead of Jeff Jarrett and all I, I, I'll, I'll never understand like Monty Brown was in two Super Bowls. If like you, you brought in all these celebrities. But he's only a double A ball player. <laughs> they brought in all these celebrities to try and get the mildest of of like press hit. Could you imagine the press hit you would get from Monty winning the NWA title? This two time Super Bowl champion Monty Brown wins the NWA title at, at TNA's final resolution pay per view. Pretty easy. It would be a mainstream media story that this former football player won, the, uh, and like, fair enough, he lost both those Super Bowls, and I don't think he even played in them very much. But he's a guy who was on two Super Bowl making teams. Hey, slow news day. You need on, a, on any sports show in the country, you're getting on. Yeah, it would it would make news, and you're desperate for attention. And this Jarrett Rain is dead in the water. There's not a single, I don't think, a single person buying these shows every month to watch Jeff Jarrett's title defense. Nobody. But unfortunately, there is a single person who gets to make some of these decisions. <laughs> well, like, the problem is Dusty's not a Monty guy either, apparently. Oh, that's silly. Um, okay, so like this is the worst booking decision in company history to this point. Maybe even... In history? Yeah, this is the wrongest decision in TNA history. I, I am very confident saying that. I can't say the wrongest decision. The wrongest booking decision. Well, yeah. There was a little Spike TV Vince Russo thing that happens a little later on, but this is the worst booking decision. In terms of, yes, the actual television shows, this is the wrongest creative choice they have ever made. And... Like, honest, it's a thing that kills a dude's career. Like, you know, like, like he he's still around here and he's still, like, is a guy for a couple of years and he gets the WWE run, but, like, you feel as if he, like, was made here. It could have been a, a launch of a whole separate thing. Yeah, I don't think Monty comes in as ECW nerd if he's NWA champion. Yeah. It's going down, 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 down. He did have that great theme, though. Didn't they not even let him do the pounce for a while? He, he did the Alpha Bomb, if I remember correctly. Mm, he had, like, a submission as well, didn't he? I believe so. I, my, most of my Monty Brown... So, well, sorry, what was his name in... Marcus Corvon. Marcus Corvon, which is actually a pretty good name, to be fair. Um, most of my memories of him were in, like, SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. Mm. So, which I played as him a shit ton, because he had a banging theme. They should have added the ooh ah 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 to that theme. Oh, ooh, ah, You're going down, down, down. Just call me smooth. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. Uh, just call me pals. This is a very depressing decision. Mm-hmm. It killed one paying uh, subscriber as <laughs> Rich Crate never returned to the company from this moment forward. It's uh, it's bad. It, I'm sure it turned off a lot of people. And we, we talked about this and we'll talk about the matches themselves in a minute. But like, it came off the back-to-back matches of AMW versus Team Canada, which is one of the best matches in company history. And Styles Save and PD and Ultimate X, which is another of the best catches in company history. <laughs> and like, you could have had mm. that real swell of momentum where you have those two just incredible 
kick-ass matches, and then you have Monty winning the belt for the feel-good title change of the babyface finally beating Jared after... Like, Jared's been champion for six months at this stage, since June 2nd. He's been champion since he won King of the Mountain. And this is the best match of that reign. Yeah, I think this, that's the saddest thing about this, is that this match is good. And again, it goes back to the, the Monty isn't ready thing. And it's like, he just gave Jared the best match of his reign. Yeah. It's 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 all very upsetting. Like, I... I, I, I the only way that you, you you can make this call is if you work yourself into a shoot thinking your homegrown guys aren't stars, which I think is ultimately what happened. And even if you want to make the case to me that like you you want to get the Nash and DDP title matches out of Jarrett, then do them. Do the Nash title match, do the DDP title match, and then have Monty do the Monty match. Don't do the Monty match first, then have Monty win the belt in April or in May. Like... I, I, I can't fathom what they're doing here other than they're, they're, they're two big marks for stars elsewhere and not concerned enough with making their own stars. And I said, Monty is a fucking professional footballer who made Super Bowls. He's not a nobody. <laughs> One of the things that hits best when wa- watching wrestling is a great pro wrestling hat trick of segments slash matches. Mm-hmm. When you have that like block of a show that is like an all time great thing. Nothing quite hits better than that. And having Monty Brown winning this would have been the perfect cap. It would have sent them off with so much momentum and it would have been the right call. And the fans were ready for it and the fans wanted it. And to make it worse, this match was structured in a way that made you think Monty Brown was winning. Yeah, so Monty shoved Jared into the ref. Jared then hit Monty with the guitar, but Monty kicked out. Jared hit Monty with the belt, but Monty kicked out. Monty ducked the pounce, uh, but then Monty connected with the referee instead. Great bump by Rudy for the pounce, by the way. He just went flying. Jarrett then, classic callback to the Ron Killings match where he had uh, guitars hidden everywhere. He pulled the guitar from under the steps, a second guitar. It was like a sort of guitar too. It was like a little stubby one. It was great. A little baby guitar. He has to find like like smaller guitars that he can hide under the steps. His regular size guitars clearly won't fit. <laughs> um, Monty got the guitar. He nailed Jarrett with it. Second referee came out, but Jarrett kicked out. Monty went for the pounce. Jarrett hit him with the remains of the guitar. Hit three strokes and a low blow to retain the NWA world title. So... We were talking about this during the watch along. Mm-hmm. Jeff Jarrett definitely thinks he got this guy over with this way the match is structured, right? Yeah, and like the thing is, it, it's ultimately a Dusty Rhodes call that Jarrett retains. I'm sure there's politicking going on. I'm sure there's more behind the scenes than just that. But like D- Dusty's the booker, and he booked Jarrett to retain. But when then when they brought this up on Jarrett's podcast, Jarrett still defended it. So it's not like Jarrett's a guy who's like, oh, God, they, we really bottled it then. I really should have lost the belt. Like, Jarrett is like, oh, he came up with seven different excuses for why Monty shouldn't have won the belt. So clearly, he's in support of this decision, too. It wasn't the thing he's, where he was like, we really need to drop the belt tonight. Come on, it's the perfect moment. It's like, nah, he wanted to retain as well. The most egregious thing to me is that he went back to his hotel... He ate his well done steak and milk, and he was like, he was like, I did a, I did a great job today. Yeah, we, I really got that kid over. We made this guy. Yeah, I think there's a worse Monty booking decision to come. Ooh, when he loses another NWA title match. No, you can look forward to that one in March. I think they they even bottled it even further with him. But we will get to that when we get to that. There is, as I said, it's it's the, the the worst creative decision in TNA history. There There is no single result that is more wrong in TNA history than this. Monty should have won the belt. There's no if, buts, or maybes about it. He should have won the belt. Yeah. It's, it's just so, it's so deflating. It's just that moment where it's like, they had it. Sitting there on a plate. Monty had momentum. Had the fans behind them. It was an organic moment. It built organically. You did this with a homegrown guy who has mainstream appeal. Who looks like a star. Talks like a star. And just gave Jeff Jarrett his best title match of his reign. So it goddamn works like a star. There's no reason you shouldn't have pulled the trigger here. Absolutely none. Jarrett, six months into a reign people are already sick of. And we'll look forward to this when we talk about it in February. But like the crowd actively turned on Jarrett at this stage and, and it just cannot tolerate the man on a level beyond Good, heat. shit. And it's it's so stupid. It's so, And it, it's not like one of the cases where with hindsight you can say they were wrong. Because in the moment you could say they were wrong. Well, that's, it's a thing that turned off a lot of people, so clearly it was in the wrong. Should have pulled the trigger. 
on the alpha male Monty Brown. But think, uh, you know, if you want to live in, again, you know, those multiversal glasses I was talking about, um, if you want to live in that moment, just really look at the poster that we put up this week and just pretend. Yeah, just just look at our show poster and be like, oh, look, it happened. Yeah, just uh, buy the poster that isn't for sale. <laughs> put it up on your wall and be like, I remember when that happened. Pretend that that was, in fact, a moment in history. Well, Berenstain bears it. <laughs> oh, if we all just pretend that Monty Brown won in this match... Mm-hmm. It will have happened because reality perception is reality. So if we all just say that Monty Brown beat Jeff Jarrett, it happened. Unfortunately, we do have to watch more content with Jeff Jarrett as the champion. But they did they did a weird. Oh, sorry, okay, so Monty won the belt, and then in a yes. dark match at TV, Jarrett won it back. Monty won the belt, and then they did a tournament in Brazil, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And Jeff Jarrett won that tournament and had the belt back. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I remember that. I remember reading that in the Observer. Observer, that's what it's called. 